I have lots of ideas. I have lots of ideas about business. I have lots of ideas about marketing. I have lots of ideas about product development. I have lots of ideas and they flow all the time. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. We were having lunch and he was saying to me, Andre, how do you come up with these ideas that you have? You always seem to have an idea for a new product or a new video, um, a new blog post uh, in your newsletter. You just seem to have this flow of ideas. And it's true, I do have a flow of ideas. And uh, I was beginning to think about how does that happen? And what occurred to me was um, a book that I read a long time ago. Now, the book is called Money Love. It was written by uh, Jerry Gillis. And it was written in the 70s. And in fact, that book could be a video in of itself because there's so much wisdom in that book. The author Jerry Gillis has passed on, uh, but about 10 years ago, I think it was, he and I had a conversation and we talked about that book. And uh, the book had such a profound impact on me when I first read it long ago that there were certain concepts I remembered. And one of the concepts we talked about the concept was called creative laziness. Now, when I first read that, I was a teenager and I thought, okay, uh, I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to be creative and it's going to help me make money. And it seemed counterintuitive to me. Uh, and in fact, uh, Jerry and I, when we talked about this, he talked about how that book was written. It went on to sell millions of copies, by the way. That book, when it was written, he wrote it in 14 days. He said it just flowed from him. And it turned out to be a, a major bestseller. I learned about it because he was interviewed on a television program. And uh, I instantly went out and got the book and uh, loved it. And, uh, you know, again, later in life, he and I had some conversations about uh, the speaking business and personal development and, and so forth. And we, we talked a little bit about his work and... Uh, many of the concepts, and he was working on some new concepts when he passed, but um, we, we talked about this idea of creative laziness. Now, um, let me tell you how I look at this concept of creative laziness. The way I look at it is the first thing is you, you have to appreciate that many ideas are flowing all the time and, and uh, you might not be aware of them because you're just not tuned into uh, your intuition. Your intuition is effectively a way to connect you with this larger source of ideas and insights and guidance that you might sometimes be disconnected from. And so creative laziness is one way to regain that connection and to become more of aware, aware of it. And the way I approach that is I ask for a solution to a particular challenge I'm having in business. Or I'll ask for ideas. Now, I've been doing this so long that it's, that it's a natural process for me. So I might even be walking around my office and thinking, um, I need an answer on how to tackle this. I need to know the best marketing approach to take. I need to know the right person to work with me on this project. I need to know which way to prioritize things. So when I'm doing that, I'm effectively asking uh, my intuition to help me out. I'm asking for some guidance on how to approach things. Now the next piece of this is where the, the <laughs> I guess the laziness comes in uh, because what you want to do then is effectively do something else other than work on that idea. Now to do something else could mean you stop working, it could mean that you go do something else, you have lunch, you have dinner, it could mean that you go to the beach as Jerry Gillis would recommend, lay on, lie down under a tree as he would recommend. I do lots of things that are, um, uh, I think, enjoyable but many people might look at it and say, you know, what's really happening there? For example, 
I was going to a meeting one day, and I was in uh, Manhattan, and I was taking the subway to the meeting, and it turns out there was some kind of congestion in the subway, and I couldn't get to that meeting at the time that I needed to get there. So I canceled the meeting uh, you know, on my phone and uh, decided to get out of the station where I was, and I walked from uh, wherever, whatever station that was, and I walked maybe 30, 40 blocks uh, through Manhattan. Now, during that time, I saw, saw sights, uh, experienced sounds, I saw people, and I just had a wide range of ideas and, and thoughts that came to me. And some people, you know, when they're walking, they're not thinking about ideas per se. They're, they're, they're observing, they might need to not even recognize what they're looking at as being an answer to something they've asked for, but, but I'm alert and I'm looking for those answers. So when I say do something new, what I'm saying is uh, put yourself in a position where you can do a little mind wandering, a little daydreaming, uh, something that um, allows you to let the ideas flow, the observation flow, the sights flow through your mind. Now here's the key thing, is if you understand this practice, you'll then also understand that there is a capture <laughs> mechanism there. There's a place where an idea comes to you, a thought comes to you, and you recognize it as the solution to uh, your, your, your challenge, your question. That's where many people go wrong, they dismiss it. They think it's nothing, they think it's no big deal. They hear words come out of someone's mouth, they see a billboard, they hear a song on the radio, they see um, something that triggers a thought, and they think of it as a, quote, coincidence, not as something that is designed to answer uh, the questions that they've asked. So this is the creative laziness process. It isn't um, just lying around and doing nothing as much as it is um, giving your intuition a way to deliver the idea to you um, that removes the stress and strain and resistance, if you will, that exists when you overwork. Now this is something I really had to learn because the idea of not working at something was something that I had to relearn. Uh, I probably began to relearn that about 10 years ago uh, because my pattern had been to work, 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 work. And frankly, the work was out of fear that I wouldn't use the time well, fear that I wouldn't um, address the things I had to address, fear that uh, we were not achieving the milestones in the business that were important. Now, I might not have admitted that at one point because I, I might have resisted the idea of saying that it was fear, but that's what it was. And then when I began to understand that the work can be out of joy, you can work long hours if you want, but let it be out of satisfaction. Let it be out of artistry. Let it be out of creativity. And that's fine, you know. Uh, you know a, um, I know a person who's an artist, and, and he'll paint for hours and hours and hours into the night. Uh, he doesn't. He's not stressed about it. He's enjoying it. He's enjoying every moment of getting things just right, uh, the colors just right, the images just right, everything just right. So creative laziness is a process of working on a completely different level than our society would have you believe is the appropriate way to work. And as you become more and more mature in your work as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, whatever you do, I recommend understanding and applying this idea of creative laziness. So what do you do? Number one, you ask for what you want. You ask for ideas. You recognize that there is a larger source of guidance that will help you. Um, athletes get it, artists get it, musicians get it. They go into a zone and that zone is tapping into something that sometimes they can't quite explain. 
The next thing is you do something else. You play a different piece. You play a different section if you're, if you're an artist. You engage in something else. You try something new. And in the course of that, this idea of mind wandering, daydreaming, um, you will connect to these sparks, these ideas that are the, the uh, sometimes it's just laid out for you. Uh, and uh, you know, I've heard people talk about writing songs. Say, yeah, I wrote that song, it just came to me, I wrote it. And then other times it'll be the beginning of something bigger. And then you have to remember to recognize it when it comes. Capture that idea, use it, uh, and, and value it, and appreciate it, because it is the, um, the makings of something substantial and uh, something rewarding, something satisfying, and often something very profitable. If you like this tip, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you liked it. Some people, uh, by the way, uh, watch my channel all the time, and I ask them, hey, are you subscribed? And they say, you know, as a matter of fact, I, ha I have it. So please subscribe to my channel. Please make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you share it with others. There are people out there who need to hear this message. They need to hear this tip. They need to look at it from this perspective. Please help me out by sharing it with, with someone that you know. And uh, make sure you stay tuned because I have a lot more here and a lot more coming. I'll see you next time.